Welcome to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson and I ask my guests one simple question, why? Focusing on the importance of why, I share with you the relatable, uplifting and inspiring conversations I have with people from all walks of life. This podcast will encourage you to focus on your why to enable and empower you to achieve the success you desire. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Today on the Focus on Why podcast, I am joined by Tony K. Silver. Tony, welcome. Good morning and how are you today? I'm really well, thank you. How about you? It's Friday and I've had a really good week, so I'm happy. Excellent. And no buster to interrupt us. I've put my dog away, so we've got no dogs to join this party or this conversation. They can join us later. All right. So, Tony K. Silver, what does the K stand for? The K actually does stand for my middle name, which is Keith. But it came around uh, by a person that I'm probably sure you know, Amanda C. Watts. And she explained to me why she used the C. Quite simply, if you look up Tony K. Silver on LinkedIn or Google, you only find me. Therefore, you get rid of all those other people that are impersonating me. Well, I wasn't blessed with a middle name. So unless I make one up, I will have to just make do with Amy. The other day I heard that J.K. Rowling also didn't have a K either. So interesting. Makes a difference. It sounds a bit American, but that's the reason that you know, I tell people if they look me up, they can't not find me. Perfect. So why would people be looking you up? Why would they be looking me up? Uh, they were looking me up because um, they need help and they need help in business uh, on various different levels, um, mainly around the fact that I'm a LinkedIn profiler and that is uh, what I mainly do. But I've been in business for many, many years, owned a couple of companies, uh, so I'd also give them good and sound business advice. And how is this? Is this a new business or is this something you've been doing for a while? Um, no, it is relatively new. So we, we are um, about two and a half years in. Um, it was structured. Uh, it was all meant to be. It wasn't one of those um, mad decisions. Um, I spent about nine months putting it together before I, I went into it. Uh, so, but no, LinkedIn wise, I've been using the platform for about 14 years. And why LinkedIn? Why LinkedIn? Well, originally, it, was, it literally was, uh, I worked for a, a large company uh, in West London, and I was a senior account director there. And my boss said, look, I've come across this LinkedIn and you're really going to like it. It's right up your street because you build relationships. That's what you do. And I thought, okay, let's have a look at it. And like many people between 2006 and 2010, I put up my CV on it. And that was it? Much, yeah, very much. If you talk to people that joined during that period of time, that's kind of what they did. Um, and it wasn't really used for anything else at all back in those days. And what was the result of you putting your CV onto the platform? That when he actually may be redundant, <laughs> but I actually could use it to uh, try and find myself another job. Uh, so, yes, I, I originally used it for uh, the job hunting side of things. And how do you use it today? Uh, quite simply, I uh, demystify the platform for people because uh, there are many people that I speak to. Um, and the current figure for the UK is 29 million people have got user accounts. And uh, probably 90% of those are not using it effectively. Uh, so I take them on a journey. I take them from where they are to where they need to be. And we would have discussed where they want to be. Um, and I hold their hand through the process. They go from being, you know, my tagline is, you know, uh, be seen, be engaged, uh, or be anonymous. Uh, because that's kind of what it is. Uh, if you've not got the right profile, then you are kind of anonymous on a platform with that many people. Because ultimately, I don't believe in, uh, you know, your USP. No, people don't have USPs. There's virtually always someone that can do something identical to you. So you need to be better than them. Okay. So how do you become better than someone without it then becoming you? Um, well, when people look at LinkedIn profiles, so someone's looking, uh, it could be that they want to engage you uh, to work uh, for them or um, work with you. In other words, become a client. And as I say, there's no way that they're going to come up with a, uh, a list of only one person. It's not going to be just you. There's going to be other people that are going to be looking at. So it's essential that um, when they do engage with your profile, that it ticks all the boxes. Uh, and they get down to the bottom and, and the decision is fairly much, yeah, Tony is the person I need to work with because he, st he stands out over and above the other candidates I've looked at. 
and um, that's what I do for my uh, my clients. I make sure that they stand out, and you know the decision is normally they are the person. So, what are those boxes that people should be looking at? Right. Well, the the, the biggest one, uh, the one that a lot of people get wrong, is what do people see when they land on your profile? And it doesn't matter what particular um, device they've used to find you. They will see a banner, they will see a headshot, they'll see a headline, and they also see the first three lines of your about section. They are crucial because you've got five to seven seconds to decide that person's going to decide whether they actually want to engage with you. So the banner needs to tell the story. So if it's a standard LinkedIn banner and you're listening to this, go and change it now. Um, if it's just an image, what does that tell someone? It might be a nice arty image, but what does it actually represent? So you need a combination of uh, words and images. And then your headshot, quite simply, a professional looking headshot, head and shoulders against a plain background gets 14 times more engagement. Okay, it's not quite so arty as some other people's, but I'd rather have the engagement. Um, and then the headline, it needs to tell, and I've just written, I'm writing an article as we speak, and it's all about what's in it for me. And that is it. People are looking at your site because they're wanting to know what's in it for me. So uh, lots of use of the I word is not very, very good. Lots of use of the U word and asking questions. Hmm. People will be going, ah, yes. That's a question I want to say yes to. And then I teach people that you know, that's the engagement strategy. You put it out there. You know, so mine is, you know, would you like your LinkedIn profile to generate your leads? If the answer is yes, then as a LinkedIn profile, I can help. And then always a call to action. You know, let's book a call. You've now got 220 characters within that, so you can fit all that in there now. Yeah, it's not many characters, is it? And I've spent probably a total of, I don't know, several days accumulatively by all just tweaking it, changing it, thinking about what my target audience, who is it I'm looking to appeal to. And also because of these sort of SEO scenario with Google, it, it's really important because if someone types your name, LinkedIn is going to be the first thing that pops up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and getting that engagement, um, the, I quite understand that actually doing the tweaking is actually good because every time you change it, you're kickstarting the algorithm and then it goes, oh, look, Amy's done something um, and then we'll index you for it. So that's, that's good. I mean, it's a bit like a website and that's kind of what my article is saying, the similarities between websites and LinkedIn profiles. If you put up a website and just leave it there, guess what's happened to the SEO? Yeah, we well know it, it just drops off. Google uh, is looking for activity those LinkedIn. Oh, that's really interesting. And how are you helping people to really nail their, their delivery of their profile? Well, as I say, I, I literally, I'm a LinkedIn profiler. So when I set out in business, um, although the, you know, at the time I think it was about 25 million people, that's a lot of people, um, but there are not that many LinkedIn trainers compared with the 25 million people. But I still was told by my mentor, I had to niche and the profiling was a niche that I decided to go down because I understood the algorithm and I knew the importance of all the different sections. So actually letting people know that seemed to be the thing to do. Um, literally telling them the 12 key areas, uh, you're uh, indexed on those areas. So it'd be a good idea if you knew what they were. Yeah, I mean, I've had a really good conversation, several conversations actually with Sam Rathling about the various sort of ways that you can really up your game. And she's written a great book called LinkedIn Bound. And I know you also know Sam because there aren't that many LinkedIn trainers, really. No, and I, I don't, yeah, I'm Sam, Sam's someone I look up to. You know, she's been in business for a long, long time. You know, typical success story, start in the bedroom you know, and then now runs a company that is continually expanding. Um, and she deals, she deals in a slightly different market to me in a slightly different way. But the synergy and, you know, we literally chatted twice in the last month um, because, you know, what we do is ultimately we try and help people. And you talking about algorithms and you understand them. What are the algorithms that they're using and, and how could we sort of use them to our benefit? Oh, by employing me to show you. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, it is, it is something that you... Um, you it's not, there's no easy answer to that question at the end of the day. Um, and if I told people how to do it, then I'll be out of work. So um, I'll kind of, I'll skip that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I mean is, is, is a more essentially, how much will it make a difference to someone? In right, yeah. 
to get it right, so to actually have uh, first a profile that's engaging, someone lands on it, they actually want to engage with you. Um, but also, um, it's the activity, you know, uh, it's the activity which is the fuel of the whole platform. And if you get that right, then uh, it drives. And it drives one particular metric that I use, and that's the search appearance number on LinkedIn. A lot of people don't even know it's there, but actually just below your profile, just below your about section, there's a dashboard and only you can see it. No one else can see it. Everyone sees the first figure, you know, who's viewed my profile? 450 people, yay, brilliant, fantastic. Yeah, okay, but let's look at the search number, which is the third number. And then click on it, because actually it has a clickable number. When you click it, it opens up. It gives you some information. First of all, how recent those searches were done, and they're always no more than a week old, so it's nice and current information. It shows you the companies that put the search in that you came up as a result. It tells you the level of the person in the company and the keywords they use. You so you can see what sort of person is actually engaging with you, but the number. You know, most of the people I just start doing business with uh, are in double digits. They get found on average 50 or less. Um, let's, have, uh, let's be generous and say people can have the weekend off. So that's a five-day working week. So people are being found 10 times a day in searches. I move that figure uh, five, six, seven times uh, by working with the clients and basically tweaking their profiles, showing them the activity and giving them the strategies. They find themselves moving from 50 to 250 to 350 searches a week, 70, 60, 70 people a day are finding them. And then it is a numbers game. There's no, there's no two ways about it. Um, it's all about getting them to come to your door. So you're being found, you're not in the room, but ultimately you still need to convert them. Uh, that I can't do for you. That's really interesting. I did not know that you could click on that number. And also the benefits of being found, but then obviously not being contacted. So there's something that you're not doing right for that sort of connection to have been made. So there's really useful information and data there. Yeah, well, what I would say is that we go back to that first figure um, and who's viewed my profile. The one thing I would say is that I do not use anything other than the standard LinkedIn platform when I do my training. No sales navigator, no professional level, because you don't need it. Most people I deal with, they uh, don't know how to use the platform and they need to prove to me that they can use it inside and out before I tell them they should be investing money. So one of the things you do is who's viewed my profile. It's in the left-hand column on the menu. Have a look a couple of times a day. What we're trying to capture here are the people that have looked at your profile in the last 24 hours. But actually, if you've got premium like I have, I can go back months. What's the point? You've lost it. You know, anyone that's older than 24 hours, apart from probably the weekends, you're too slow getting back to them. So I go in twice a day and I look and see, and I'm looking for second or third line connections, but mainly second line connections because I can talk to them. And I will literally, if someone has looked at my profile and they're a second line connection, I will go straight onto their profile and I'll go straight to the contacts and go, oh dear, you could put another word in there if you wanted to. There's no phone number there yet again. Um, so I have to either spend time on their website looking for the phone number or I actually message them and the message in, is all around exactly what I would say on the phone is, you know, I see you've looked at my profile in the last 24 hours, you know, would love to know how you found me. And um, was there anything of interest, you know, is it, is it a good reason to have a chat? That gets me business just by doing that. But I only look at the last six because that's all you can do in, in the standard one. But by doing it twice a day, I capture virtually everyone that comes through uh, and I engage with them. That's brilliant. And you're demystifying the platform, which I mean, it has got so much potential and it's not people just scrape the surface with it, don't they? Yeah, I mean, the good and bad thing for me is that LinkedIn's marketing department kind of doesn't bother. Um, if you're looking for a job and there's, you know, LinkedIn recruiter and all those other lovely, brilliant tools that they've got. But if you're actually running to want to run a business and generate leads and build you know, a network, etc., they don't actually tell you much about how you can do it. And they're also great at doing updates and not telling you about it as well. So it's not, wouldn't be more than one occasion where I'm sat in a boardroom like a, the one behind me today on my virtual, and I go live. The second part of my workshops always go live, and I push a button and, oh, that wasn't there yesterday. And, yeah, they're not very good at doing it. Uh, they don't market it well. And it does an awful lot of things that people don't know. So actually part of my training is to show people the actual platform, all the little buttons and all the other little things. I mean, they, they introduced an events tab 
which was we've been crying out for years for it. Um, I found out about it through the beta testing program, and it came to being. Again, it sits on the left-hand menu. Did they tell anybody about it? No. And actually, it's really, really good little tools. So if you're running events, and so obviously now a lot of online events, you can promote it. It can be an integral part of your LinkedIn strategy. Who knows it's there? Wow, I am literally wanting to just disappear off into LinkedIn and have a look at all these things that you're mentioning because I just want to pique my interest. So why have you set up this business and are working with LinkedIn like this? Um, I think it was a no-brainer for me um, on various different levels because when I had to use LinkedIn to find myself a job, I got trained by a master LinkedIn trainer. Okay, so I got to learn everything I needed to know. Uh, I found a job. I worked for a, a large chamber of commerce, and I continually used my knowledge and skill to build my network. And um, the chamber of commerce was one of the largest in the UK, with members such as Microsoft, Dell, O2. So I'd often sit down uh, at lunch, uh, talking to a director of one of those companies, and I used my LinkedIn knowledge to you know, give them some benefits. They became friends, and I just built that up. So when I was looking to go into business again, I thought I, I can't live my years out. I'm not 60 now and I didn't want to retire uh, working for a company. I wanted to actually go back and, and do my, uh, do a, I don't plan on retiring either. That's the other thing. So this is, this is not just a short term, it's, it's a long term thing. But it just made sense that LinkedIn, I just knew it inside and out. And I also knew, because going through the chamber, I ran Chamber of Commerce events for about three and a half years. Okay. So I ran 420 events for them. So I met tens of thousands of people back online. And obviously the conversation would always be about LinkedIn. Um, and often they would come to me because they've heard, oh yeah, you know, I, I hear you know about LinkedIn. And it just, it was very evident the actual level of knowledge on um, what you could do with LinkedIn was so poor that actually, yeah, uh, as, as we say, there's not enough LinkedIn trainers out there for the number of people that need the help. It was a good market to be in. I knew what I was talking about. I had 10,000 plus connections um, across the Thames Valley. It just made sense to do it. And the other thing, which is a personal one, which I will throw in, is that I wanted my wife to retire at 60. Uh, she's a teacher um, and realistically, God only knows what year, you know, 66, 67, I don't know, even know these days what the retirement age is, um, but I want you to retire. So I needed to build the company up so she could retire and, and we have a plan. Uh, Project 60, we call it. So when she's 60, you know, she can, she can retire uh, because what I do will bring us enough money in. So that, that was the personal driver as well to it. So that was your, your why? That's my why. Help, helping people, which sounds very weak, but it's, it's kind of my driver as well. I actually really get a massive buzz out of putting people together. Um, I don't have to get anything out of it at all, other than they found the solution to their challenge by me finding it for them. So, yeah. It doesn't sound weak at all. Why would you say that? Well, I always say people, if people say to me, yeah, well, why are you really able to help people? It just sounds a little bit generic, I suppose. Well, what is your LinkedIn profile? What does it say? What does it say? It says, you know, I am the LinkedIn profile. And actually working on um, the basis that you need some credibility. So, you know, well, why should you listen to Tony Silver, uh, Tony K Silver? And the fact is that, I've worked on it, but when you actually put into that search engine, so that's another thing on LinkedIn. Uh, people are often told they need to buy Sales Navigator because they can't do effective searching. Um, and one of the strategies I use is I say to people, and I'm like yourself, I'm a public speaker. I go up on stage and I say to people, you know, what sort of you know job title are you looking for? And one at the moment is HR director because of the furlough uh, situation. And I go, okay, we'll put a search in. Oh, look, 1.9 million. Now, who in the room can go for that list? Because the Ferrari's in the car park, you've got a job. No. Oh, okay, nobody. If I could show you, and this is a cheesy sales line from the 80s, and I, I tell them this, if I can show you, dear prospect, how to turn that list down to about 50 people in 90 seconds, would that be of interest to you? And of course it is, and I'll go and do it. So I actually, actually drive it. If you put LinkedIn profile into that search engine, there are currently about 2,450 results. I'm at number one, quite simply. LinkedIn ranked me at number one in the search engine for LinkedIn profile. That's very, very impressive. It just, at yeah, bottom line, it shows me that I know how to work a platform. You know, and that, that, that's, I mean, I drop to two and three every now and again. Um, 
the reason for that is part of what I do. I teach people the strategies on the activity side. So if I'm not doing it because I'm too busy working, I get affected by it as well. So having niche down, and this is what everybody always tells you to do, to sort of niche, 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 because that's how you're really going to hone in on your target audience. Are your target audience on LinkedIn? Do they know that they should be? Yeah. I mean, bottom line, when I started the company, I had this sort of idea that it was going to be networking training as well as LinkedIn training, because having networked probably over 2,000 events I've been to now, um, I kind of knew what was good and what was bad. But people would not admit that they needed network training. Oh, I'm okay at networking. And you're going, no, you're not. But you go into a room of people and say, hi, I'm a LinkedIn expert. Oh, good. Yeah, I don't know how to use LinkedIn. My profile's awful. And, you know, people were falling over themselves to present them <laughs> themselves as a potential client of mine. So it just made sense. Um, that was the sort of route. Uh, I do a little bit of network training, but yes, it was a massive amount of people um, needed the help. And because it covers so many different industries, um, one interesting fact is LinkedIn claim that they're in 200 countries. Interesting fact, there aren't 200 countries in the world. So where so are the others? 192, yeah. isn't it? Yes, yeah, so I think 196 of them. But yes, it's not 200. So uh, another statement is not quite right from LinkedIn. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, very, very few industries, uh, people I talk to, don't realise that LinkedIn is something. And even those that uh, feel that they're in a B2C world, um, when I've spoken to them, realise that actually perhaps they need to be on LinkedIn because uh, some of the people that they go around houses to and do the B2C selling to are managers, directors of companies, and therefore are on LinkedIn. Um, so that's the best place. And also... As it's perceived as a professional private platform um, of a personal nature, they will look for people on there. And you know, having a good profile on LinkedIn uh, is a great way uh, of getting a professional person to deal with you. So you might be selling insurance directly to people uh, as an individual, but again, they're liable to find you on LinkedIn. And you mentioned earlier that if you're not online, you're anonymous. It is so important now to, to have a profile and have an active profile on, on pretty much all the platforms. Do you, do you just focus on LinkedIn or do you, are you on other social media as well? Um, I'm very much um, LinkedIn 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. Uh, I, I link, as you can do, you, you can link some of your activities, uh, send them out to Twitter. Um, yeah, I don't really use it. Um, Facebook certainly isn't something that I get involved in uh, that much other than uh, with your good self because um, we're both public speakers and they reside on Facebook rather than LinkedIn, which is kind of weird when I was first told that. But no, I generally speak in LinkedIn. I'm not an Instagrammer because it's not really visual what I do. Um, so no, I, I stick to what I'm best at and what I know. And bottom line, I know what most people need to be using as well. So um, it, they find me, you know, Tony K. Silver, and I always say to people, if you want to find me, just stick that into LinkedIn. Don't worry about anything else. Now, the reason I asked the question earlier about are your target audience on LinkedIn, if, and it's because most of my target audience don't use LinkedIn, and I wish they would. So I have to find them on other platforms and then get them to migrate across and then see the benefits of LinkedIn for their yeah, businesses. So I, I have probably you know we always get told to define our avatars don't we it's one of those things that all the marketing and the, the coaches which i hate the term coach uh, tell us that we needed to do um and mine are very clear if i'm out networking um i tell people you need to be really clear about your target so somebody or anybody wants their linkedin profile improved is not the thing i say um i'm looking for a partner uh, in a professional service company in the town that i'm actually networking in I'm also looking for uh, a manager of a client facing team because I need to talk to the team about uh, their activities. Um, and then, yeah, solopreneurs are very much um, not saying micro business, I'm saying solopreneurs because they have the right attitude, they invest in their self, um, and therefore, you know, they're a good person to speak to. So, my avatars um, are all on LinkedIn. Are they using it properly? Potentially not. So that's why I use the search side of it, just go and um, make them aware. But my biggest strategy, quite simply, is networking. Um, and I've had a little dabble of uh, email marketing, etc. But 
you know, if you're in the right room, um, which is the one I'm banging on about a lot at the moment in time, uh, I was the other night, uh, I was introduced to a new group, um, and from about two o'clock onwards, I was uh, within this virtual room with them, and they had an, an evening event. I um, increased my uh, LinkedIn connections by 17 people. Not just 17 people randomly picked up, 17 people who wanted to link in with me because they wanted a one-to-one. -one. Uh, I think at least 13 of those are really booked spots. So that for me is great because there are 13 people who are interested in LinkedIn. Um, my conversion rates are quite good because I'm very, very targeted. Uh, so yeah, that, that networking is a great strategy for me because most people say, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, but I'm not really using it effectively. And I really think I ought to get around and doing something about it. Um, and you're there, so let's talk, you know. And you also give a, a money back guarantee as well, so. Absolutely. The, the two guarantees I have in my business um, is that if you work with me and you do the work, um, a little rider there, because uh, one person did once upon a time and short said, oh, I'd like my money back. I said, well, if you do some of the work and it still doesn't work, I'll get your money back. Um, they did some of the work, got two new clients and shut up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I offer a 100% money back guarantee. Also, um, I support my clients once they become clients and say to them, if you message me, you know, I will get back to you within 24 hours guaranteed um, because that's kind of all oh, I've always done that even long before LinkedIn. It was you know, why I was a business relationship director. I get back to people. And if I can't solve the challenge, I'll let them know. I won't let them leave them hanging. They'll always get something from me in 24 hours. So um, the feedback I get from people is they love the fact that I'm always around to hold the hand and help them. And that's why you know, one of the biggest decision making uh, for them was that. Um, apart from the knowledge was that they felt that Tony's going to be around and he's always going to be there to help us. So you mentioned a couple of things earlier. One was that you had a mentor who helped you to, to get all of this in focus for you. And then you've also just mentioned that you don't like the word coach. So just, just give me an idea of the difference for you and why you don't like the, the, that word. Okay. Um, so if anyone ever asked me, you know, what is the one business tip you would give anyone? it's going to be get yourself a mentor. You know, um, it's, it's someone that will, uh, uh, and again, it, my mentor was younger than me. Um, I don't I haven't got to be an old sage, but it's someone who's been in business, someone who's, who's been there, done there, bought a t-shirt and wants to give back. And they will guide you. They will stop you making uh, the mistakes. They won't tell you what to do. They will just give you advice and make you think. And that's the real thing. They make you think. Uh, and my mentor certainly did. Um, and that's why it took me best part of nine months to get ready uh, to go into business because everything he said made sense. And I believe that he's very successful because he stands by those reasonings. So I had to have that all sorted out before I was going to launch or I was going to become another statistic, you know, one of those people that failed in the first year. Um, the mentors are totally invaluable. Coaches, well, you know, we've only got a certain amount of time on this podcast, but I'll, I'll shorten it down. <laughs> you know, if someone said to me that a coach, I say, oh, 19 or 52 seater. Um, and it takes a while for that to sink in with some people. But that's so common. And the problem for me is that people can call themselves a coach without any accreditation, anything at all. They can go and buy a franchise and call themselves a coach. They are textbook heroes, most of them. And if you give them a real life scenario that's not in their textbook, they don't know what to do. And the trouble is that, that has given the whole coach word, it's tarnished it. So there are some really great coaches out there uh, that I know and you know as well. But I just don't like the word because the connotations are, I tend to think of the people that call themselves a coach, but they're actually, um, yeah, again, filling the word for yourself. I'm not gonna swear on, on the podcast, but yeah, they don't know what they're doing. And they're charging people for this. And that's what really gets to me. They're going out there, they're not qualified, there's no accreditation, and they're saying that they're a coach and they're going to teach you. And realistically, they're charging you for something they shouldn't be doing. Uh, that really does annoy the hell out of me. So is educator a better word? Yeah, yes. It's, it's one that I gave one of my uh, dearest uh, friends. The other thing that um, I always say to people, um, get an accountability buddy. You know, um, I've been in my members of various masterclasses and, and out of that, you know, I have two accountability buddies. I tend to be the person that drives it, but they know that if Tony's going to be ringing on Friday, oh, I better get on and do what I promised I was going to do. Uh, and, you know, that, that really, really works quite well as well. Um, it just makes you very focused. 
So what have been your challenges in setting up your own business? Has anyone got in your own or have you got in your own way or anyone got in your way? Oh, got in my own way. Yes, that's the, that's, that, that is the, the main criminal here. Me, no one else. Um, although I, I must admit, uh, I had two mentors. Um, uh, the other mentor was a gentleman who appeared on The Apprentice, um, but I knew him before he was famous. And neither of them mentioned imposter syndrome. Yeah, everyone laughs when I say that. Everyone that's uh, started their own business goes, oh, yeah, we went through that. I said, Look, I wish someone had warned me about it. And what imposter syndrome basically is, is that if you come out of the corporate world, you're used to having a value. You know, you get X thousand pounds a year, or you might work worked out roughly what your hourly rate is. And then you're trying to price your products. And you're thinking, well, I used to get 25, 35, whatever it was, pound an hour. Um, perhaps I'll give a bit more and, and go in at that sort of level. No. And what happened initially is my products were far too cheap and people didn't value them. And that was, that was a lesson I, you know, I took a little, look a while to learn that, that actually what they're paying for is the 14 years uh, of knowledge uh, and, and all that, if you're nodding your head exactly. But yeah, I mean, when my, uh, one of my mentors forced me to triple my prices overnight, I started selling. Product hadn't changed, but, oh, there seems to be some value to this now. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, that's the one thing. So I was my own worst enemy. Um, the other thing that I did um, was because I set the company up with an, uh, a bundle of cash. So the first thing, if you're going to go in business, people out there, make sure you've got three to four months cash flow in your business. Be, and also realize that in the first year, you probably won't make any money at all. You'll be spending it. I had that money. So I was kind of a little bit, you know, um, and I networked in places I shouldn't have been. In hindsight, looking back on it, it was a comfort blanket. Uh, there's nothing wrong in having a couple of those because you need to be around people. And at the moment in time, you know, with, with COVID, we're all locked in. It's, it's driving me nutty. But back in the early days, it's a nice to be around business people. Um, but looking back, were they ever going to be engaged with me? Were they ever the right people to buy my products? Uh, no, they weren't. Uh, so, yeah, I really completely changed it now. As I said to you earlier, it's very much about the room for me now. Um, I need to be in the right room. So eight out of ten events. Um, I'm very, very concentrated on having a business plan for why I'm in that room. I have a couple of luxury events. Uh, we're just about to go to one ourselves in the very near future, uh, which is great. But again, you know, that particular association, the PSA, I rejoined that in July. Um, I have got six times my investment back. So yeah. okay, it's the right room to be in. Uh, the PSA is a fantastic network and I, I'm a huge fan and, and that's how actually we, we've met. So, and I, I've most yeah. of my, not most of them, a lot of the people who have come on the podcast have been through connections. And I just had a call or well, an email this morning from someone in Australia who had been recommended by somebody else who was through the PSA to, to want to come on the podcast and to talk about that. So it really does pay off. It does. And actually, you were recommended to me, although I knew you, by someone who's in Norway. That's right. Yeah. A global connection. Here we go. Absolutely. That's, that's right. And hopefully she'll be at the next meeting. So LinkedIn, what's the future for LinkedIn? Yeah, I get asked this from time to time because they say, well, you, you know, as you said earlier, what do you do? LinkedIn, full stop, end of story. Um, are you not concerned? No. Um, the bottom line is it's continuing to grow. We're now at 706 million people uh, on LinkedIn. It's owned by Microsoft. They're not going anywhere um, fast. So realistically, for something to come on and replicate, beat, better it, economies of scale, they just cannot even compete with it. Um, so no, I, I'm very comfortable that um, as long as they keep evolving and you know, Microsoft are a bit of a dinosaur and they're very slow moving, but they do get there. Um, there is so much there. And as I said to you, you know, there's you know, 28, 29 million people in this country. There's so many people who still need the help. Um, even if it didn't evolve, it would take me next 10 years quite easy to go through and help people, even if it didn't do anything different to what it does now. But I know it will. I know it evolves. And I do get told about things um, through the, uh, the network I have, uh, things that are coming up, etc. So some days when it's glitchy out there, people, it's because they're doing something in the background. No, it's, it's one of my favorite platforms. In fact, it probably is the favorite purely because it's it's much more of a resource for me. I, I find a huge amount of of pleasure just going through articles that people have written and connecting with people and, and finding 
to people like yourselves, you know, just understanding what value is being offered on the on the profile, so on the on the platform. So could I give a tip on articles? Would that be would that be a good mm. idea? Yeah. So yeah, articles. People say, well, why should I do an article? Um, they've heard that it's not very well promoted on the platform, and guess what? They're actually right. It isn't. Um, so why should you do it? The two reasons you should do it is that it positions you as an expert in your field, okay? And secondly, it's nicely indexed by LinkedIn. But still, yeah, when you put it out there and you publish your article, it doesn't make an awful lot of impact. So very simply, because all articles uh, have their own unique URL, copy and paste it into a post and then tell the world about it through a post. That gets a lot more um, pushed out a lot further. Better still, tag people in that post even further you know we we played around in january it was about six of us uh, linkedin trainers from all over the world and we had one particular discussion by using these various tactics uh, we got it over to a million views um, just by using those tactics so yeah uh, you can do it but yes articles definitely do articles because they do position you as expert you know it's a great way another little tip if you're going to write a long form article First line of that should be, this is a 20 minute read or whatever it is. So the viewer actually knows because they can actually save the article for reading later on nowadays on LinkedIn. Again, something that came in that they didn't bother telling anyone about. So that's a really, really great tip because with the articles, I often struggle to get my characters for a, a post and get the right number there. And it's a constant battle. And I think, actually, you know what, I should probably should have just written this as an article because then I'm not restricted by the length. And then probably put me off by the fact then that the reach hasn't been as good as the others. But what you've just reminded me is if I do write an article and then repost it with a link, that is great because it's not taking you off the platform. So it won't be shut down because it is a LinkedIn yeah, so internal. Actually, that's a very good point, Amy, that if you're going to use a link to an article, you can put it in the free text because it's an internal link. If you go and thinking of sending someone off to your website or something like that, do not put it in the free text to the post. LinkedIn, do not like it. You're going away from their platform. Quite simply, just put a little comment at the bottom of the, uh, the post saying, please see comments below and stick the link in there. That gets around the problem. Yeah, I still sometimes think that they, they, they read those words and they say, it says, link in comments below because those posts when I when I type that aren't as successful as when I just put it in so I wonder if there's something against me there but maybe I'm just being paranoid you haven't upset them have you <laughs> uh, potentially I, I post a lot I'm quite you're, prolific you're, you're not you're not using some VA in, in Vietnam or anything like that are you no I, I I probably do need to outsource more because I am doing everything myself and that's that is not a good use of my time but I enjoy it so it's hard to give up yeah, and it's a certain, yeah, I get asked, would you run our LinkedIn for us? Um, no, it's the same as Sam, she won't do it either. And we, uh, it was great to hear that she sort of had the same thoughts on me. And it's, I just feel it's dangerous, you know, so if I'm doing Amy's posts and articles. Amy's the expert, what she does. I might know a bit about what she does, but I just think it's very risky. Uh, I've known two or three people uh, have given it to agencies to do and they've gone, what? It's gone out in their name. Reputation, you, you know, we both know reputation is everything. Uh, one bad can actually really undo an awful lot of damage to an awful lot of good work you've done over the years. Mm. Oh, it's been so much fun talking about LinkedIn. I've been geeking out almost on this. <laughs> it's been really good, Tony. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Okay. How, would, how would people reach out to you and, and get that incredible result that you're talking about for their own profile? Well, quite simply, you know, I could point you at a website and everything. And I have a website and it's www.solidsilversolutions.com. But just go onto LinkedIn, put Tony K. Silver into the LinkedIn search engine. You're going to find me. Uh, and that's that is the best place because I kind of I've sat on that all day. It's pushed through to my phone and my watch and everything. So if you message me, I will definitely see it and respond. Fantastic. Well, I want to wish you all the best with Project 60 because that sounds fantastic. And I'm really excited to hear how that goes for you both. Not as excited as my wife is. <laughs> Well, it's funny because you did say that you wanted to retire her, but I'm sure she wanted to be retired. So she, oh, yeah, no, I mean, it's she's... her choice. 
it was it was Project 60 and always has been, but she kept renaming it Project 58. <laughs> I think she was hinting. No pressure. No. <laughs> and have you got any final words for us today? No, I mean, it, the final word for me is, you know, if you do nothing, you know, get that top of your profile sorted out. Get that banner that tells someone what you do. Make sure you've got a professional picture. Don't lean against your Ferrari and think it's clever. It's not. Do a headline that asks that engaging question and then just start your about section in the you mode, not the I mode, because you've got five or seven seconds for people to engage and you could be the best person for the job. But if you don't engage in that five or seven seconds, the next person that they're going to look at uh, is going to get the engagement instead. Thank you for listening to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave me a five star Apple podcast review. Connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook and become a member of my inspiring, uplifting and positive Focus on Why Facebook group. I help people to focus on their why with clarity, uniting their passion with their purpose with a plan to create the life they truly desire. If you would like me to help you focus on your why, then please book a free 20 minute coaching call via candidly.com forward slash Amy Rowlandson. And if you haven't already, please sign up for the Friday Focus weekly newsletter via my website, amyrowlandson.com. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why.